I'm Robert Dickman and this is Richard Maxwell. We're standing at the border between Los Angeles and Glendale. And up this way, about 200 yards, one of the worst train accidents in California history occurred. Eleven people died. John Phipps wasn't even supposed to be on that train. Usually he drove his uh, Chevy pickup truck to work. It wouldn't start. He had to get up really early in the morning to get on that train. And he dozed off. The next thing that happened was, bam, he and everybody else in that train are upended. He hits the wall violently, and he's knocked out. What he couldn't have known at that time was that a deranged man with an SUV drove on the tracks right over here and parked. This caused two metro liners to collide and derail. And another train plowed in from the rear. When John awoke, he was upside down in a car that was dark, hearing the moans of other passengers. He couldn't move because of the debris. His head hurt and he touched his forehead and it was covered with his own blood. He was dying. He wanted to reach out to his family. So on the window, he wrote, I heart you, Leslie. And that was his wife and I heart the kids too. Passed out again. First responders, firemen, cops, they were rushing to the area. And these guys are hardened. They'd seen everything. They were looking for any signs of life. When they saw his story on that window, they were moved. They rushed in and they moved the debris and they saw that he was breathing. And they triaged him and they even rode with him to the hospital. They wanted to do everything they could to keep this guy alive. This is a happy ending because John Phipps lived. I like the story Bob just told, and it's an excellent example of what makes stories work. In our book, Elements of Persuasion, we define a story as facts wrapped in emotions that compel an action that makes a change. Now the fact was that John Phipps was dying and he knew it, and that produced a tremendous surge of emotions in him as he thought about the family he was leaving behind. Those emotions compelled him to take an action. He left a message, a love story written in his own blood. And that story changed everything. Because stories and the emotions they contain are contagious. So when the first responders read what he'd written on that train window, they had an emotional reaction and they were compelled to do everything in their power to make sure he survived and got back to his wife and kids. Most of the time in business communications, we're trying to compel people to do something. To buy our product, to vote for our candidate, to take a chance on an idea that's maybe a little bit outside the box. The best way to do that is to use a story. It's definitely the most memorable way. A study done at UCLA has shown that if I present you with a PowerPoint, one you really like, one you actually watch, you're going to remember about 20% of the facts it contains 24 hours later. But if I put those same facts in a story, you will remember 80% of them 24 hours later. And if I make that story so compelling that you want to tell it to someone else, and good stories are contagious, you will remember 90% of those facts a full week later. So what is it that we want you to remember about our story? When you have facts and you want people to remember them and take action, then you have to wrap them in a compelling story. The right story at the right time can save your life. It definitely can close a deal. Thank you.